Hello YouTube, I hope you're doing well. Today we're on code.org, we're in lesson seven, part five. It says this program is being designed as a simple list library. Write test to make sure the first function works, then write the second two functions so that they can pass the tests written. So let's begin by running the code. And this is what's printed out to the console log. It doesn't say much, let's look at the code. The notes at the top say creates a new list of the length given with the same value repeated. It says we have the length, which is a number, the length of the list to create, and then we have the value and the value to appear in every item of. So let's look at this function. We see it's called fill and we have two arguments. We have length and value, which is listed above. Within this function, we have a list being created. It's empty. And then we also have a for loop. We have var i at zero. It's gonna to look to the length of this. And as long as that variable is less than the length, it's going to run this for loop and it's gonna add one to the variable each time it's run. And then it's gonna append this list with the value. What we need to do is write out three different console logs. And we're gonna call this function with the arguments that are required. So let's go to variables. We want three of these console logs. We now need to go to functions. And what we're going to do is this one right here, call a function. The function's going to be fill. If I hit tab on my keyboard, it'll put me in those parentheses. And then I can add the two arguments, length and value. The first one, the length, I'm going to have it set at 10. And then I'm going to add a string. I'm just going to do hello. And if I click out, it populates correctly. I'm going to copy this line so that it can take a little bit of a shortcut. The next one, I want it to be printed three times. And I'm going to do something that's not text. And then our last one, we're going to do seven times. And we're not going to make it a string. We're going to make it a number and we'll go show blocks and let's reset this and run it to see if it works. All right, we have hello 10 times. We have the smiley faces that I made three times and then I have the number 47 seven times. So that works. Let's scroll down. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to finish this function. Down below, we have the console log and we have this message along with the function call and it fills it with the list and a number. And what we need to do is have this function multiply this number by the list. They've already created the variable list that we're going to populate and ultimately print. Now we just need to write the for loop. We go to control. We go ahead and drag this in. Var i equals zero is what we want. We don't want this to be four though. We want it to be the list dot length. So the information that's passed into here, we want it to look at the list and look at the length. And as long as that variable is less than the length of that list, it'll traverse through every number within the list. And then each time this for loop runs, we're gonna add one to the variable so that it can get through the entire list. Now what we wanna do is we wanna append this list. So if we go to variables, we're going to do a pinned item. Our list is going to be return list. And then this section's a little bit trickier. We're going to do our list right here at index i. And we're going to multiply that by this, the number. So if I type in number, and I click out of it, it'll set. Let me just review what we've done. This right here is passing information into this function. We have a list of numbers and we have a number that we're gonna multiply by. Within this, we have an empty list. It's going to be populated through this for loop. It's gonna look through the entire list that was passed through. What it's gonna do is it's going to take the item at each index and multiply it by the number here. It's going to do that three times because we have three different console logs. 
Let's go ahead and reset this and rerun it. So we see here our numbers, they're multiplied by two, two, four, six, that is correct. For the next one, it's multiplied by five, 50, 100, 150, that looks good. And then we have by three, but we have negative numbers in that list. So negative three, negative six, and negative nine is correct. So we know that that works. Let's scroll down a little bit further because we have another function that we need to write. So this one says returns a copy of the list given, but in reverse order. And that's gonna be the list that needs to be reversed. And then it's gonna return the same list, a copy of the original list, but in reverse order. Out of everything in this assignment, I think this is probably the most difficult, but it's really not that bad. If we go to our control toolbox, we're gonna to create a for loop. They've already given us a variable for the return list. We have var i set at zero. We actually don't want it to be set at zero. What we want it to be is this, the list that's being passed in. We're gonna look at the length minus one. So we're gonna start at the very last index entry. This also needs to change. I'm gonna to go to show text. We're no longer looking to see if it's less than a list. Because we're starting at the end of the list, we need to work backward to index zero. So this is gonna be greater than or equal to, and not four, but index zero. And we're not gonna be adding this time because again, we're starting at the end of the list. So we wanna work backwards each time. So instead of plus plus, we want minus minus. So again, just to try and explain this, we're gonna set the variable i to the last index entry within the list that's being passed. We're then gonna to look to see is i less than or equal to zero. I had a typo there. As long as this is the case, it's gonna run our for loop and then it's gonna subtract one to i. That will allow us to start at the end and go all the way through that list. We need to append this list. So we're gonna to go to variables, append item. Our list is gonna be called return list. And what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna do what we did before. We're gonna return the value here at index i. What will happen is it's gonna print this string of text and then it's gonna throw this list into this function for reverse. It's gonna start at the end, and then it's gonna work itself backwards, and it's gonna print each one of those items in reverse. Same thing here, and it'll do the same thing for the yes, no, maybe. Let's go and run it just to see if it works. All right, we see our original list here was one, two, three, and it printed backwards, three, two, one. And same thing here, yes, no, maybe. It printed maybe, no, yes. I would say this wasn't too difficult. We're just starting to see things a little bit differently. If you struggle with this in any way, I would encourage you to go back and click version history and go back to the default setting and then rerun through this activity so that you make sure that you understand what's going on. Once you feel comfortable with this, make sure you click finish.